This is Twit. Uh, not so cool was the news of last week's LastPass breach announcement, which, as I mentioned before, overwhelmed my Twitter DMs. Um, so I wanted to lead with this because so many of our listeners, myself included, are using LastPass. Um, so I had, as a consequence, also received an email from LastPass. The current LastPass CEO, and I, I say current because it's been, <laughs> it's been jumping around somewhat recently, a guy named uh, Karim Tuba had the following to say in their online blog posting, which echoed the email that he sent to everyone. He said, I want to inform you of a development that we feel is important for us to share with our LastPass business and consumer community. Two weeks ago, we detected some unusual activity within portions of the LastPass development environment. After initiating an immediate investigation, we have seen no evidence that this incident involved any access to customer data or encrypted password vaults. We've determined that an unauthorized party gained access to portions of the LastPass development environment through a single compromised developer account and took portions of source code and some proprietary LastPass technical information. In response to the incident, we've deployed containment and mitigation measures and engaged a leading cybersecurity and forensics firm. While our investigation is ongoing, we've achieved a state of containment, implemented additional enhanced security measures, and see no further evidence of unauthorized activity. Based on what we've learned and implemented, we are evaluating further mitigation techniques to strengthen our environment. We've included a brief FAQ below of what we anticipate will be the most pressing initial questions and concerns from you. We will continue to update you with the transparency you deserve. Thank you for your patience, understanding, and support. So note that there's not a categorical denial that anything like password vaults, it's just no evidence of. Right. So I feel like there's we we're not completely out of the woods. That I'd like to know that there is in fact not merely no evidence of, but it didn't happen. Um, okay. I'm I'm, yes. I'm curious what you think about that. The other thing is I think so, this is part of the Twi the Twilio breach. That this is a follow on on the Twilio hack, which turned out to really be problematic. It was pretty deep because yes. so many people use Twilio for authentication and other. Uh, you know, texting. And so, so, forth. so of course, that we have the the problem of proving a negative. So, uh, you know, lack of evidence is not evidence of lack, and so forth. Right. Okay. So, so the the short version of the FAQ, I I don't I'm not bothering to share it all, but it was basically that there that they believe there is to be zero impact upon LastPass users. You know, no need to change passwords, do anything, or take any action of any kind. And I'm sure they're unhappy that this occurred since, you know, I'm sure that they hold their proprietary information in high regard and don't want attackers snooping around in it. But we've always known since I first checked out the technology that Joe Segrist originally designed uh, is that so long as the last pass code that runs our local browser vault is not itself compromised, you know, and that's the that's the key. I mean, that's the that's the golden goose. There is the is the 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 script in our browser that knows how to decrypt the local copy of the vault. Um, as long as that's not compromised, the only thing we're providing to LastPass, the only thing they have of ours to lose, is a very well protected encrypted blob of entropy, one from each of their users. You know, that's what they hold for us in the cloud, which allows them to link all of our devices together. And I'm sure this is no longer unique technology. I don't know that it was back then. But, you know, though I haven't looked, I would imagine and hope that's what every other password manager also does, because it's the only way to do what we all want safely. Um, we know that LastPass uses a strong many iteration PBKDF, uh, you know, a password-based key derivation function, 
which runs in our local browser to encrypt all of our password data before it ever leaves our local machine. So you need to have a good strong password to protect your vault. If you have that, you're as safe as you could be. And presumably, you know, adding any of their other security measures such as multi-factor authentication, hardware dongles, etc., only strengthens things from there. But this leaves us with the question. With LastPass having admitted to having one of their developer accounts breached, should we change password managers? You know, that's I was asked that directly by many of our listeners, and it's a worthwhile question. Um, lacking any additional information, and no additional information is available at this point, I think that's an emotional decision rather than a rational decision, which is not to discount it. I mean, I, you could argue that the human race is here because of the result of emotional decisions. Oh, you could argue um, that trust no one is an emotional decision <laughs> too, I guess, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So the reason I think that, that is that, this is that, we, that we need a rational decision is that, you know, because there's no, there's no factual basis currently for knowing about what matters. To make an informed decision, it would be necessary to deeply understand the company's policies and procedures, like as an insider, and to know exactly how this particular breach occurred. They're not saying. Their policies and procedures would tell us how they have set up the barriers, which hopefully exist, between their developer resources and their production services. Yeah, you hate to but think you, that it's so easy that all we have to do is uh, social engineer one person and well, then it's all uh, yes. gone, right? And Leo, just look at what we just learned about the way Twitter operates. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like right. crap. Uh, okay, but but then you would also need to know that same thing about the password manager you were considering switching to. Again, an emotional decision needs no justification, whereas a rational decision is only about justification. Now, I've always been careful to draw a clear distinction between policies and mistakes. Policies are deliberate. Mistakes, well, they're mistakes. When you're an employer, for example, and this is the example you and I have often used, Leo, you know, and an employee screws up, do you fire them because they screwed up? Or do you consider that they made a mistake and have learned a valuable lesson from it? You know, if as a consequence of having made a mistake, they're now a better and more valuable employee, why give them to your competition? So, you know, unfortunately, we don't know enough about the inner workings of LastPass to make an informed decision about switching. You know, should we now be more or less afraid how does their actual policy and behavioral security after this incident compare to the actual security available elsewhere? Well, and there's an interesting uh, comparison because uh, it's believed that the same nation state hacker who did the Twilio attack, uh, we know DoorDash was attacked by the same guy. They say yes. Yep. Uh, but Octus, uh, Signal, uh, and LastPass all, all breach roughly the same time using similar social engineering attacks. So it... But who, the one who wasn't, but was attacked, was Cloudflare. Remember this? You had this story last week, I think. They use YubiKeys, and because they use strong security, even the even that the social engineering attack worked, it didn't compromise them. Yeah. So that's that's the uh, that's the kind of thing I'd like to see from LastPass. Yes. Right. And 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 in his note, he was. Non-committal. I mean, what he wasn't specific. He talked about you know increasing their security and tightening their boundaries and things. It's like okay, uh, again, it. So 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 we have we have an example, but again, to to make a change, you need to know about where you're changing to, just as much as you need to know about where you're changing from. So you know, if LastPass learned a valuable lesson, that's great, but. I have no idea, and neither does anyone else. Their track record is all we really have to go on, and it's been good so far because the security architecture is good 
and it's the security architecture that I'm relying upon. At the same time, as I said, presumably everybody else's security architecture is equally sound because none of this should be rocket science anymore. Would you, you recommend know, if I were changing your last pass password at this point? Would that be a reasonable response rather than changing no, your password manager? No, no, no. I don't see how that has any effect okay. because okay, be because it's the password which is used only locally right. to encrypt the blob which we send there. They don't have access to that, or nor they, do they, need it. they they never have. They right. don't want it, right. and that was you know Joe's original con you know his original concept. So, yeah. if I were starting out today. All other things being equal, I would probably choose Bitwarden. Uh, you know, being Our sponsor, open source. We gotta say uh, yes. That's and not why you're being, choosing them, I'm sure. <laughs> no, and in fact, you know, being open source, I'd be able to do the same sort of security architecture right. vetting right. that I once did with LastPass's designer Joe Segrist. Right. As we all know, as you, and as you just said and reminded us, Bitwarden is currently a sponsor of the Twit Network, and I think that's great. Though it's worth noting that LastPass had never been a sponsor here at the time I chose them. Yes, I chose in fact, them. it was because you chose them. I think many years later, I figured that they it came was. to us. Yeah, yeah. You know, I chose them because Joe was more open than everyone else, which allowed me to understand exactly how their system worked and why it was the proper design. It's kind of ironic because if, in fact, what the bad guys got from LastPass is the source code. Bitwarden's open source. They they got that already. Is it right? Is it right? And and in a properly designed system, it it's shouldn't okay. matter. It shouldn't yes. matter. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, many of the flood of DMs I received last Thursday asked whether I was still using LastPass, and if so, whether I was now planning to change. Security Now, podcast number two hundred and fifty six. I love that it was two to the power of eight. Uh, was dated July 9th. 2010, and it was titled LastPass Security. The little summary description for it on Twit says, Steve thoroughly evaluates LastPass, explains why high security passwords are necessary, and tells us how LastPass makes st storing those passwords secure. So it looks like I've been using LastPass for the past 12 years, and I still am. If they ever give me a rational reason to change, I will in a heartbeat. And whether or not Bitwarden is still a sponsor of the Twit Network at the time, I would probably go there because openness matters. But, you know, so does inertia and the devil you know. So, uh, anyway, I'm still using them. I, I don't see any reason to change. Uh, subject to additional information coming to light. You know, there's never been a, a breach that, that, that affected our our stored security because of the way it's designed. Yeah. And that's what, counts. you know, and that's really what counts. Yeah. And then it's a matter of looking at the pricing and the features and, yeah. you know, does it, what, what suits your, your model best. I just never have a problem with it. So it's, no, you know, no, no it's reason. not, yeah. it's not irritating me. And I have a very soft spot uh, in my heart for LastPass, not only because of your support and I used them for many, many years, uh, but when they became, the studio sponsor a few years ago, they kept us on the air through COVID. Uh, if it yeah. weren't for LastPass, I don't know if we'd still be on the air. So I have a very uh, soft spot for LastPass. Uh, I do use Bitwarden. Uh, I like the idea of open source. But I think yep. there's pretty much feature parity between most password managers at this point. Yeah, and, and really, it's just inertia. It's yeah. like I, yeah. there's no good reason for me to leave because it works. And if there, when there is, yeah, I'll be out of there like in a hot second. But so far, so good.